Hey everyone, Dr. David Clark here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the four worst foods you can eat if you have Meniere's disease. Let's start with the basics. Uh, Meniere's disease is a problem that affects the inner ear and it produces symptoms like uh, tinnitus, you know, ringing of the ears, hearing loss. Sometimes it can make your hearing feel muffled or distorted. It also produces vestibular symptoms like dizziness and vertigo, uh, sometimes very severe rotational vertigo. Uh, Meniere's is a brutal condition. The episodes or the flares of Meniere's disease that these patients get are terrible. Some people get them for hours. They're totally debilitated, can't drive. Uh, sometimes you don't know when they're going to happen. So these people are, uh, they're almost like they're homebound because they don't know when their symptoms are going to flare up. It's a really, really terrible condition. And over the last 20 years or so, uh, I've realized that Meniere's disease is really a, uh, a metabolic problem, uh, an inflammatory problem. And what I'm going to be sharing with you today are the four worst foods you should be eating if you have Meniere's disease because it's really going to affect this inflammatory problem. Now, in Meniere's disease, you basically get an inflammatory response in the inner ear. Now, the problem is your inner ear is encased by bone. Right, and so if you ever like turned your ankle, you know, and your ankle will swell really big, well, that same thing can happen because that's part of the immune system process, the inflammatory process. That same thing can happen in your deepest inner ear. The problem is there's no place for that swelling to go, and so basically your inner ear, your vestibular system, and your cochlea can get kind of crushed from the inside out, thus producing all these uh, terrible symptoms. Now. Uh, if you read a lot of the research literature over the last 20 years, you'll see more and more information about Meniere's being a, you know, a metabolic and inflammatory problem. Uh, and that's certainly what I've seen over the last 20 years. Now, granted, you know, there's sort of a, what we call a selection bias, which means by the time a Meniere's patients made it to me, uh, other stuff they've tried hasn't worked. <laughs> so uh, maybe what I'm seeing is an overrepresentation. That being said, uh, what I'm going to share with you today is what I've certainly found over the last 20 years treating these patients and what uh, the research literature says uh, as well. So the next thing to understand is where does this inflammation come from, right? So if you read some of the literature and if you talk to some ENTs, they may say, well, we don't know what causes this. But there, the literature is pretty, uh, I think it's pretty clear on some potential causes for it. And for me and the patients that I've seen, Meniere's disease usually boils down to inflammation coming from somewhere. Very often an autoimmune problem somewhere, the side effects of that autoimmune problem, or they've got something else that they're doing that's promoting inflammation, okay? So everything that we're going to talk about that are the worst foods to eat if you have Meniere's disease, the worst things to take in, are things that are going to provoke inflammation, right? So let's start with number one. Number one worst food to, to eat if you have Meniere's disease is wheat slash gluten. Why? Because a lot of people have uh, gluten sensitivity, right? They have an immune system problem with gluten. Now, not necessarily celiac disease. Now, I have another video that explains, you know, what celiac disease is and kind of goes through all the different kind of, you know, details about wheat and gluten. But the point is, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, have undiagnosed uh, gluten and wheat sensitivity, and it provokes inflammation. It also, I'll give you a little side note here, it also provokes barrier breakdown. Now, you may have heard of a leaky gut, and the gut, you know, there's this barrier in there that kind of keeps things separated. But you've also got a barrier in your inner ear, and we call it the blood labyrinth barrier. Well, that barrier can get leaky too, just like your gut barrier. And uh, if that barrier becomes leaky, you can start to get inflammatory responses to things like wheat or other foods. Uh, so wheat and gluten are by far the biggest one, biggest offenders I've seen. Uh, related to that, there is some refer there are some references in the literature about uh, increased rates of gluten sensitivity, but that's sort of beside the point. My own practical experience says, yeah, that's definitely a problem with uh, the vast majority of Meniere's patients that I see. Now, the other food that's kind of like uh, one one B here would be dairy, and the reason I, I tell you dairy is because dairy is a molecular mimic for gluten. Uh, I have some other videos that explain like cross-reactivity, but basically what it means is that uh, dairy looks similar enough to gluten that uh, your immune system, if it, if it has a problem with gluten, can also have a problem with dairy. So the first thing I would tell you is probably don't want to be eating uh, either one of those things. Now number two on our worst foods to eat if you have caffeine, it's not really a food, it's, it's caffeine. 
Uh, caffeine, you know, comes in a lot of different formats. You can get it in coffee, you can get it in tea. Uh, what does it do? Why do we care? Well, caffeine can change uh, ion concentration. So in your inner ear, there are these fluids. There's perilymph, there's endolymph, and all you got to know is we don't want them to mix. And they have some uh, potassium, you know, there's sodium. But what caffeine can do, and I'm skipping a lot of science here, is it can change uh, the balance of these ions, and it can make uh, it can make a Meniere's attack easier. Okay, so ion concentration changes is one way caffeine will do it. Uh, the second way that caffeine is a bad thing for Meniere's disease is uh, it is uh, it changes pH, right? Like the acid base balance, uh, caffeine can change that, and that acid base balance can also change the fluid mechanics in the inner ear that we know are going to be a problem in Meniere's disease, and it can again provoke uh, more symptoms, whether it's tinnitus or uh, hearing loss or uh, the vertigo or dizziness. Now, the last way you may not know about with caffeine is caffeine is also an immune system stimulant. Now, if inflammation is a problem with Meniere's disease, um, we need to be very careful about the things we do and how it might affect your immune system. So caffeine is what we call a T helper 2 cytokine booster. Okay, And all you got to really know at this point is that may not be okay for you and your immunophenotype. There's an easy way to test this. There's a blood test called a, a lymphocyte immunophenotyping. And phenotype just means, you know, what does your immune system look like? And really what we're talking about is in simple terms, your immune system fingerprint, right? So for you and your immune system and your Meniere's disease, is caffeine something that would be okay or not okay based on what your immune system is doing and not doing? Really, really important part of taking care of Meniere's patients is really going after their immune system, dissecting the immune system, and figuring out you know what their what their immune system fingerprint is. All right, so that's wheat, gluten, dairy, uh, and then caffeine, and the third one is sugar. Now, I don't mean just like sugar that's in apples, right, or sugar that's in grapes, but I mean like added sugar, right, like the kind you get in sweet drinks and, you know, candy and junk food and that kind of stuff. Why can sugar be a problem? Because basically sugar is inflammatory. Uh, excessive sugar causes surges in your blood glucose levels, and those surges come along with a surge in a cytokine called interleukin-6. Now, a cytokine is just an immune system messenger, but basically we don't want surges of cytokines, and sugar provokes that, uh, especially added sugar. And if you have high surges of interleukin-6, that's inflammatory. And remember, if our whole goal here is to avoid inflammation, then that's something we want to be limiting. Now, of course, the other thing is if you take sugar uh, even further, then we can get insulin resistance or diabetes. I've treated a whole bunch of patients over the years with many years that were flat-out diabetic, or insulin resistant. Some of them didn't even know it because uh, some of them had never been tested. <laughs> uh, they'd seen some well-meaning ENTs that just never thought to treat them like they had a metabolic problem. So that's kind of a, a side point. But uh, when you become insulin resistant, what that means is you're going to have higher levels, higher levels of glucose. And we already know that being insulin resistant or even pre-diabetic is a very inflammatory state. So that's why we want to be avoiding added sugars and simple, simple sugars. Now, the last thing I'm going to tell you about, which is the, one of the, the four worst things you can eat if you have Meniere's disease is sodium, right? So sodium, you know, occurs in a lot of just foods, but excessive sodium, which is really prevalent in our kind of Western diet, uh, is a problem. And there's a couple big reasons it's a problem. Now, you, you may even know about this because a lot of ENTs will tell people with Meniere's disease, hey, uh, follow a very reduced or limited uh, sodium diet. And that can help. One of the reasons it helps is because uh, when you bring in sodium, too much sodium, water comes with it. And if we already have too much fluid in the inner ears, uh, we don't want to bring more fluid, right? Because there's no place for it to go. But the other way that sodium really affects Meniere's disease is through your immune system. Uh, we know, lots of research on this, that sodium promotes, another cytokine here, T helper 17 cells and interleukin 17. And that cytokine is really inflammatory. Uh, very inflammatory. It promotes autoimmune problems. So the autoimmune problems we're referring to again are not necessarily an autoimmune attack on your inner ear, although there is some of that. Uh, basically, when it comes to autoimmune problems in Meniere's patients, what's not very common is an autoimmune attack on the inner ear. Okay. What's way more common is an autoimmune problem somewhere else in the body, 
And because that problem is inflammatory, the inflammatory side effects of that problem have their effects, at collateral damage, if you will, on the inner ear. So sodium causes retention of fluid and it affects your immune system. It's pro-inflammatory. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway I think I would tell you is if you have Meniere's disease, here's the four things, right? Uh, wheat, dairy, uh, caffeine, sugar, and uh, sodium, which we just talked about. I would really make sure that I was limiting those things, but look, don't try to DIY this yourself. Uh, usually you're going to have to have your immune system really thoroughly evaluated. It can be a little more complicated than what I'm making it out here today, but these are some things you can do right away that may, you know, may really help. Um, but I would recommend you work with someone who's very experienced with Meniere's and the metabolic aspects of it because uh, they can do some of that immune system fingerprinting testing I was talking about and really kind of tailor uh, an overall treatment plan uh, for you since, you know, uh, your Meniere's is not necessarily uh, your neighbor's Meniere's disease. So just make sure you're working with someone that understands why these things I've said today are important. Uh, and then also knows what else you can do to really get Meniere's under control so you don't have to be uh, a prisoner <laughs> uh, in your own body hoping that you're going to avoid these, these terrible Meniere's attacks.